You know one thing I've never talked about on this channel in all my time of talking about superhero media? Soundtracks. Like, soundtracks are one of the most important things that go into a movie. The soundtrack is, more often than not, one of the first things we take away from a film experience. When you think about that character, you think about their theme music, or at least you should. But that is, if you're able to, and sometimes those soundtracks just don't quite make the cut of being memorable, and I would say that is true of a lot of modern superhero films these days. And I think that's partly because the playbook on how to make a superhero theme music has very much been written and oftentimes superhero themes can be just variants of other familiar theme musics. For one example, I would say that the Guardians of the Galaxy theme is kind of like the Avengers theme, but it goes down instead of up. Now, I'm, I'm not a musician, I don't really know musical terminology, so I'm sure that sounds really stupid to some musicians in the audience if there are any. Another thing, I think the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 theme is very similar to the Avengers theme. It's like, you get a theme that's very familiar, and it kind of depends on trends and inspiration, and sometimes that inspiration really shows. So, I'm not gonna play snippets of the theme musics and the different soundtracks in this video, because I, I don't want to get copyrighted. We gotta make those preparations for the Article 13 YouTube apocalypse, so, you know, I'm just gonna kind of avoid doing that. Plus, you know how badly rights holders can abuse the whole fair use policy thing. So I urge you to look up all of these and just give them a listen outside of the films. Because in this video, I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite superhero soundtracks. Now this is mainly dependent on score, but it can include songs that go with the film as well. And just a reminder, this is the top 10 best. The top 10 best, alright? There's a lot of superhero films out there, and these are the 10 best soundtracks in my opinion. So please don't go getting angry because your favourite soundtrack sits at number 10. That's still a good thing. So, kicking off this list in number 10 is Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack by Daniel Pemberton. Into the Spider-Verse is a very expressive movie with its animation, its storytelling and its characters, and it has a suitably expressive soundtrack by Daniel Pemberton. There's a lot of different sounds and genres and vibes that you can associate with the different spider people and their individual worlds, and I think Daniel Pemberton absolutely nails this with a soundtrack that is absolutely overflowing with expressiveness. From the orchestral of the Peter B. Parker universe to the record scratching, urban, upbeat nature of Miles Morales' end of the soundtrack to the rock and metal end of Gwen Stacy's soundtrack. There's more in there, but those are kind of like the main three. When you listen to a piece of this soundtrack from when all the different spider people are on screen, you're taken on a musical journey through different dimensions, and it's just a wonderful thing. Now, this isn't so much a criticism of this score, because I think it's a perfect score. Uh, my personal reason as to why it's only number 10 on this list is because there's not really much of a theme song I can really take away from from this. Uh, there are, of course, vocal tracks on there, my favourite of which is Sunflower by Swaley and Post Malone. The rest of it is kind of not really my thing, but I can appreciate the art in it, and it definitely fits the film. In ninth place is the soundtrack from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 by Hans Zimmer and The Magnificent Six, which I know is going to be a divisive one. This is another very expressive soundtrack in the way that it traverses different genres and musical styles. You've got Spider-Man's music, which is very horn and sort of reflective piano based. You've got Gwen Stacy's end of the soundtrack, which is more like softer guitar. You've got Electro's end of the soundtrack, which is very, well, electronic. It's pretty similar to electronic dance music in some ways. You've got Harry's end of the score, which is very sort of dreary and atmospheric, but builds into almost siren-like sounds as you get into his goblin stage. This soundtrack is unashamedly expressive and comic booky. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 may not be a good film. This soundtrack may not have good reason to be the way that it is, I understand that the reason why Electro's theme is in the way that it is is because there were Sony emails going back and forth like, hey, EDM music is the latest craze. How can we get that in our film? But the truth be told, it does pay off, and I think the reason I put it ahead of Into the Spider-Verse's soundtrack is because generally I remember the tracks in this film a lot better while not listening to the soundtrack or watching the film than I did with Daniel Pemberton's score in Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I will say I do prefer Spider-Man's theme itself in the Amazing Spider-Man 1 score, which is by James Horner, as opposed to Hans Zimmer and the Magnificent Six, but I think the rest of the soundtrack overall is just more memorable 
than James Horner's score was in The Amazing Spider-Man 1, which is why out of the two I chose this one to make it to the ranking. In 8th place is Alan Silvestri's score from the Avengers series. Now this isn't any particular Avengers film, I guess just not Age of Ultron basically, because that film was instead scored by Brian Tyler, while Danny Elfman handled the theme music. Now, because the theme music is really the only memorable track in any of the Avengers soundtracks, that means that because Brian Tyler Tyler didn't ever do a cover of that, or his own rendition of that, it means that he didn't really do anything memorable or really add anything. Which is a shame because to be fair, I actually liked his work on Iron Man 3. Danny Elfman's rendition of the Avengers theme isn't bad, but it's just kind of like an alternative version of it. I guess the best of the Avengers scores would go to Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, because you kind of know what's coming with the different musical cues. In fact, there's a lot of different musical cues that are memorable but I think it's the Avengers theme that really seals the deal. But I love the music motifs when Tony has to make a sacrifice such as going up into the wormhole and then how we repeat that in when Tony makes his sacrifice at the end of Avengers Endgame. I really love how you've got the music that plays in the scene where Thanos sacrifices Gamora and when it comes time for Black Widow and Hawkeye to go and visit the same place, the music kicks in, you know what's going to go down here. And then there's the real hero, which plays over Iron Man's memorial ceremony. While it is a series of repeated verses kind of growing to a crescendo and then coming back down again, it is still a great track with a lot of emotion in there. And it can make you just as much proud as it does emotional. But the reason why these scores are not higher on this list is because while the Avengers scores do very well at utilizing a thematic landscape in terms of specific moments that get repeated across the films, it doesn't have that much of a thematic landscape when it comes to its characters. You might hear a repeat of Captain America's theme in there, but that's really about it. You don't hear repeats of Iron Man's themes or anyone else's. And I think that is because Alan Silvestri did compose Captain America's original theme music, which has since been diluted by the Henry Jackman soundtracks where it's nowhere to really be found. Another thing is villain themes seem pretty elusive in this series. Like Thanos is one of the most complex villains we have, but he doesn't really have much of a theme music. At least not one that I can really remember well. In seventh place is the score from Spider-Man Far From Home by Michael. Giacchino. Now, the reason I chose this score over the Spider-Man Homecoming score is because it is still in quite a different style. Spider-Man's music, his theme may be the same as it was before, but it all feels that much bigger this time around. But the real scene stealer here, like in the film, is the same on the soundtrack, is Mysterio's theme music. It's a weird claim, but Mysterio has the best individual character theme in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It starts off heroic, but then it gets all very weird and it kind of untangles into this very villainous theme music, which is basically the same as his hero theme, but in minor notes instead of major. And just the way that it twists and it falls and it unravels is just wonderful. And one thing I especially love about Michael Giacchino's work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is his use of a thematic landscape. There is more thematic landscape usage in Spider-Man Far From Home than there is in Avengers Endgame, which is crazy considering most of the characters that we have at play in Spider-Man Far From Home are brand new for this film, whereas Avengers Endgame is the culmination of a 10 year long series. Everybody has a theme here. Spider-Man's got a theme. Mysterio has got a theme. S.H.I.E.L.D. has a theme. There are times in the film when you can tell that Spider-Man is thinking about Iron Man because you can hear Iron Man's theme music play that was used in Spider-Man Homecoming. And what's crazy about that is it's a more memorable theme than many of the themes that Iron Man has had in the past. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. And I just love the way that Spider-Man and Mysterio's and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s theme musics overlap during the bigger action sequences. As well as that, they do a really nice job with the theme between Peter and MJ. It's very innocent sounding, which is very much what their relationship is in this film. In sixth place is the score to Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice by Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL. I think, like the movie or not, we must all admit that this soundtrack was something special. If you liked Superman's new theme music from 
Man of Steel. The good news is it is back in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. It's not as big and grand as it was before, but that's because I think Superman is at a much lower point in this film than he was in Man of Steel. It is the fall of Superman as opposed to the rise of Superman. But it's very thoughtful, very emotional, and I especially love the music that plays over Superman's sacrifice when he defeats Doomsday. Then there is Junkie XL's Batman theme, which I wouldn't call the best Batman theme, but it is certainly probably one of the most imposing Batman themes we've had, and it's a perfect fit for Ben Affleck's Batman. It's extremely rhythmic, it's extremely choiral, it's very gothic and hard-hitting, and I love the distant horn motif that plays over our deranged and lost Bruce Wayne. You really feel that sense of that he's lost in all of this. It's disorienting, but I especially love how this all comes together in the Batman and Superman showdown when Batman actually wins the battle and you hear that distant horn now ramped up to a full orchestral hit and you just know who has won this battle. But you also know how far gone he is because of it. As well as that, Lex Luthor's theme is suitably deranged, but as far as theme music goes, the real scene stealer here is Wonder Woman, and I don't even need to explain why that is. I think we all know that Wonder Woman has the best theme music in the entire DCU, just because of how freaking awesome it is. No matter how you feel about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, I think we can all admit that Wonder Woman's theme is amazing. Case closed, end of story, no arguments. In fifth place is the score to Batman Returns by Danny Elfman. Now I would say that between Batman 89 and Batman Returns, there are certainly some similarities between the soundtracks, but I think Danny Elfman goes a lot more fairy tale with the soundtrack to Batman Returns because in many ways it is kind of a gothic fairy tale. The story of the Penguin is very tragic fairy tale stuff. We all know how iconic Danny Elfman's Batman theme music is, but what, you know, is the tiebreaker between this and Batman 89 is partly the music that plays when Penguin is sent up the river in the opening titles. It creates such a magical atmosphere for this movie, but at the same time such a tragic and dark one too. And it builds up wonderfully, and as the film goes by, we just, we reach that final confrontation, and that final confrontation music is absolutely incredible. It's tragic, it's dramatic, it's twisted, it's beautiful. I don't really need to talk much about Batman's theme. We, we all know that this is arguably the most iconic Batman theme that there is. This is the one that people almost immediately associate with the character, and has probably traversed the most iterations of Batman of any theme music. See, while Danny Elfman's Batman theme may have originated in the Tim Burton Batman movies, it made its way across to Batman the Animated Series, the Lego Batman franchise, although not the Lego Batman movie to my knowledge, and even to Ben Affleck's Batman in Justice League. It's just a shame that the rest of the Justice League soundtrack couldn't really live up to that. In fourth place is the score from The Incredibles 1 and 2 by Michael Giacchino. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think The Incredibles was Michael Giacchino's first outing into the superhero subgenre. And he really jumped out of the box with this. Like, it's very much reminiscent of 1960s and 70s superhero theme musics, in that it's very much big band jazz. It's very glorious and glamorous feeling. The time period at which this is set is very much at the forefront of Michael Giacchino's soundtrack. And when the action gets going, the music packs such a punch. I think we all immediately think of that Incredibles theme music whenever we see the Incredibles. And I think that's the most important thing a superhero theme music can possibly do. It's like music you can see, but then it creates images that you can hear if you're just looking at a picture of the Incredibles. I guess for the sake of a tiebreaker, I'd say the Incredibles 2 soundtrack is slightly higher up than the Incredibles 1 soundtrack in my estimations because of the individual character themes that they give to the superheroes, such as Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible and Frozone. It's got everything that you loved about the original Incredibles soundtrack, but then you've got this additional added expressiveness thanks to these character themes, and it kind of gives you a bit more of an insight as to the world and the history of these characters in some ways. In third place is the original score from Superman by John Williams. This theme is kind of the ultimate superhero theme music. Superman's full theme, including the overture, is just absolutely so beautifully optimistic. This theme music is as much Superman as Superman himself is, and it is the music that we all immediately associate with the character, and as far as Superman themes have gone, nothing has quite come close to this. It is the ideal of hope in musical form. 
And at the same time, it is so American, it's so innocent. Now, this music wouldn't fit every single version of Superman that there is. And it has been proven, as like Danny Elfman's Batman theme music, this theme music has traversed a number of different renditions of the character. Going from Richard Donner's original Superman movies, carried over to Superman Returns, making appearances in the Lego Batman video games at Superman appearances, and then finally to Superman in Justice League. And I I think it's when applied to Henry Cavill's Superman that this doesn't quite work as well. The more thoughtful vibe of Hans Zimmer's Superman definitely fits that version of Superman much better, but in this case, like, for a very general, universal Superman, this is the theme music to go with, I would say. In second place is the score from Batman Mask of the Phantasm by Shirley Walker. See, I think a lot of people would say that Danny Elfman has the best Batman theme, but this is, this is the one I always think of when I think of Batman. I mean, it, the movie takes place in the universe of Batman the Animated Series, and Batman the Animated Series is very much the definitive Batman, and in my opinion, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is the best Batman movie to date. So you're gonna need a score that fits that, and they got Shirley Walker back who did the animated series. The difference is this time she's brought a choir with her, which makes the soundtrack to this film that much more intimidating, that much more gothic, that much more tragic. The emotions run high across this one. And what I really love about Shirley Walker's work with her score for Batman is it's not moody. It doesn't, it's not just moody, and it doesn't just feel urgent and intimidating like other Batman themes do. This is a theme music that encompasses the entirety of the character. The tragedy, the perseverance, the intimidation. It starts out like this force of nature, and there's such a sense of mystery and curiosity to it. And in Batman Mask of the Phantasm, with the added orchestration of Hans Zimmer even, it just brings this score to life in such beautiful and incredible ways. And when the film first starts to play and that theme first kicks in, you know that you're in for something big with this movie. But I'm not just here to talk about Batman's theme. Even the theme music for Andrea Beaumont in this film is wonderfully handled. It's got sort of this optimistic vibe to it, but as she kind of fleets away out of Batman's reach, you really feel it, you know? The gravity of Batman's emotions is so well thought out in this film. And I love the fact that there's even a theme motif for Batman's grief. Like for moments when he's thinking about his parents and stuff like that, there's a theme music for that. With the Joker, there is a theme music and it's the same as the one in Batman the Animated Series. And in terms of the Joker's theme music, it's very much like, there's only two Joker theme musics to my knowledge that really do this. There is Danny Elfman's Joker theme, which was applied to Jack Nicholson's Joker in Batman 89, and then there's this one, where it feels like a theme that the character would apply to himself. It feels like the Joker is expressing himself through music, in that it's decidedly kinda innocent and theatrical sounding, but at the same time a little bit haunting as well. Since that, things have been very dramatic with Hans Zimmer's theme for the Joker in The Dark Knight, through to, I, I don't know who did the score for Suicide Squad, but that, and then there's, you yeah, know, the Joker's theme in his own film, it's very sort of somber and in some ways macabre. This music doesn't feel honest, which is exactly what the Joker is kind of all about, the facade of the kooky clown, and this music very much befits that. Not to mention, there's also a great song for the end credits in I Never Even Told You, which really sums the film up really nicely. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is, and probably always will be, the definitive Batman film, and just as well, it has the definitive Batman soundtrack. And now, in first place, for what I think is the best superhero soundtrack of all time, is the Spider-Man Trilogy soundtrack by Danny Elfman and Christopher Young. Now, I really don't know how to order these three, so I thought I'd just kind of wrap it up in one, because Spider-Man's theme doesn't really change. It uses very much the same thematic landscape. The only major thing that really changes much is the villain themes. So Spider-Man's theme itself in this series is like the Bohemian Rhapsody of superhero theme music. This theme music takes you on a journey with a musical overture that begins at every one of 
of the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy's films. You feel Spider-Man rising up, the optimism of it, and then we go into Spider-Man's villain theme, like who he's facing this time, and it changes in every opening credits moment. And then we come back with kind of the tragic feeling, but also the dramatic feeling of Spider-Man coming back. He's out there. He's the superhero that we all know and love. And we've got the Uncle Ben responsibility theme in there. Those opening overtures are like all of the themes of the film to come rolled up into a nice little ball, giving us a preview of what is to come, but in musical form. And there are so many different memorable theme motifs that go hand in hand for Spidey and Peter Parker themselves. And they encompass all of what this character is all about in a way that no Spider-Man theme music since that has done. At least not in its entirety anyway. You've got kind of the tragic aspect of the Amazing Spider-Man 1 score by James Horner. You've got the excitement of the Amazing Spider-Man 2 score by Hans Zimmer. And then you've got sort of the well-meaning innocence of Spider-Man's theme in Michael Giacchino's score. In the case of Danny Elfman, you've got a bit of everything. And I feel like the third time around, it's just as exciting because in the third movie, it's Christopher Young scoring the film, but he's reusing the thematic landscape laid down by Danny Elfman, which is such a wonderful thing. Why can't Marvel St Studios films do that? Why is it that they change the musician or composer and then it's suddenly a new theme music for them. Allegedly, Christopher Young did draft in the help of Danny Elfman to make that score and really bring it to life. And I really like what Christopher Young brings to the table in that he adds a more choiral sort of epic feel to it. Whereas Elfman's renditions of the themes are a bit more rhythmic. All of the villains as well, from Green Goblin all the way through to Venom, have memorable themes. There's just something so wonderful, so optimistic and yet so haunting about the soundtracks to the original Spider-Man trilogy. And I would love to hear Spidey's theme get reprised in a future Spider-Man movie. Maybe once Tom Holland's aged up a bit and his journey as the Spider-Boy through to the Spider-Man has ended, maybe it's a time to bring that theme music back. So there we go, that's my top 10 best superhero soundtracks, and I'm sorry if you're expecting this to be a bit more diverse than it is. I notice that there's a lot of Spider-Man and Batman on this list, but I think they generally get favorable treatment when it comes to their scores. There are loads of great superhero movie scores as well, like I think Iron Man 1 has a great score, I think Captain America 1 has a great score. It's usually in those first movies that the MCU really get their character themes right, but then like say the composer can't come back and then they get a new one in and then they do a new theme which doesn't stick the same and then the whole thing just ends up getting diluted. Many of these themes that are in here are kind of sequel themes and themes that have carried over and remain consistent and I think that's kind of vital to really cementing its place. Well, what do you guys think? What are your favorite superhero film scores? Comment below and discuss. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to the Patreon and my Discord. This video is brought to you by Zentai Zentai for all your cosplay needs. Link is in the description below and they are very cool and good. Cosplay your favorite characters or send in one of your own designs. Affordable prices and very high quality. Made to order and made to measure. But most of all, made to be heckin' awesome, if you couldn't already tell. Guys, can you believe where we are now and where we started? How long ago it was that Channel Pup, or Channel Goat even, came about? Because it really wasn't that long when you think about it. Can you believe the amount of support I've received from this community, from, from all of you subscribing to the channel and everything? It's, it's unreal, it's a dream come true for me. But behind the YouTubers you watch usually comes a bit of a truth is that they're often dirt poor. Now I've had the good fortune of being able to grow this YouTube channel and hopefully turn it into a career, but I'm gonna need a little bit of help along the way to even the odds to make ends meet so that I can use all of the possible time that I have to make videos for you guys as opposed to doing something mundane for barely enough money to make it worth its while. I've done all that, I've lived that life. The fact is, together we all built Channel Pup. We made it what it is today and I wanna keep the ball rolling on that. I don't ever wanna stop doing this because this is the most gratifying job I've ever had. And I think the most pleasurable hobby anyone could ever have. I don't take any of the support that I receive from you guys for granted, but if in any way you're wondering if maybe you could do a little more for 
for the channel even, then I want to direct you to the Patreon link in the description below. It would mean the world to me to have your support via Patreon. It can help me to make ends meet. It can help me to better my content. It can help me to have more time to really work on this stuff. But you know what? I'm not just going to take your support and run. No way, Jose. I've uh, In the Patreon, you can access exclusive videos via the Pups Project Room playlist where you can see different projects I've been working on or have worked on that have either not made it to YouTube for general viewing or have been cancelled or well you can get a little view of the process that goes behind the channel pup videos and productions. As well as that you tend to get advanced previews of the bigger Channel Pup projects, our tentpole event projects. If you've seen Marvelous Tales of Spider-Man, you'll be aware that that was released on the Patreon first, and uh, 20 days later approximately was released for general viewing on YouTube. That's not the only time I'm gonna do this. But you know what? If you can't do the Patreon, or are just not interested in doing the Patreon, I fully understand. Like, it, it's, it's still a big ask in my opinion. And what counts most is your support. So, as always, thank you so much guys, I've been Channel Pup, and I will think of a better catchphrase next time. Now please leave!